ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम लालेमा अनेजा डैंग एंड विद मी इज सरबजीत कौर द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी टू एड्रेस उत्कर्ष समारोह इन भरूच गुजरात दिस मॉर्निंग एट टेन थर्टी एम इट मार्क्स सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ हंड्रेड परसेंट सैचुरेशन ऑफ फोर की स्कीम्स ऑफ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर टू ऑल्सो टेक पार्ट इन द सेकेंड ग्लोबल कोविड वर्चुअल समिट दिस इवनिंग एट द इन्विटेशन ऑफ यूएस प्रेजिडेंट जो बाइडन यूनियन लॉ मिनिस्टर किरेन रिजिजू क्रिटिसाइजेज कांग्रेस लीडर राहुल गांधी ओवर हिज कॉमेंट ऑन सेडिशन लॉज यूनियन मिनिस्टर फॉर साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी डॉक्टर जितेंद्र सिंह सेज फ्यूचर बिलोंग्स टू टेक्नोलॉजी ड्रिवन इकोनॉमी एंड कॉल्स फॉर बिल्डिंग इनोवेशन इको सिस्टम इन द कंट्री सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन अरेस्ट फोर्टीन पर्सन इंक्लूडिंग सिक्स पब्लिक सर्वेंट्स ऑन करप्शन चार्जेस रिगार्डिंग इलीगल रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ एनजीओज अंडर फॉरन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन रेगुलेशन एक्ट श्रीलंकन प्रेसिडेंट गोटाबाया राजपक्ष प्रोमिसेस टू अपॉइंट न्यू प्राइम मिनिस्टर विद इन दिस वीक श्रीलंकन सेंट्रल बैंक गवर्नर थ्रेटन्स टू रिजाइन इफ इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव डिड नॉट ब्रिंग इन पोलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी टू द कंट्री इन साइप्रस इंटरनेशनल एथलेटिक्स मीटिंग ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इंडियाज ज्योति यराजी स्मैशेज नेशनल रेकॉर्ड टू क्लिंच गोल्ड मेडल इन द वुमेन्स हंड्रेड मीटर हर्डल्स इन लिमासॉल येस्टडे In boxing, Nikhat Zareen, Parveen, and Manisha pull off powerful performances at the 12th edition of the IBA Women's World Boxing Championships at Istanbul. And in IPL cricket, Delhi Capitals beat Rajasthan Royals by eight wickets in Navi Mumbai last night. Chennai Super Kings to take on Mumbai Indians in Mumbai this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address Utkarsh Samaroh in Bharuch, Gujarat this morning at 10:30 a.m. through video conferencing. The program is marking the celebration of 100% saturation of four key schemes of the state government in the district which is providing timely financial assistance to those in need. The district administration of Bharuch carried out Utkarsh initiative drive from the 1st of January to the 31st of March this year with an aim to ensure complete coverage of schemes providing assistance to widows, elderly and destitute citizens. A total of 12,854 beneficiaries were identified for the four schemes of Ganga Swarup Arthik Sahay Yojana, Indira Gandhi Vridh Sahay Yojana, Niradhar Vridh Arthik Sahay Yojana and Rashtriya Kutumb Sahay Yojana. During the drive, Taluk Wise WhatsApp helpline numbers were announced to collect information about those who were not receiving benefits of the scheme. Utkarsh camps were organized in all villages and wards of municipality areas of the district where an applicants who provided necessary documents were given on the spot approval. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will participate in the second global COVID virtual summit this evening at the invitation of the US President Joseph Biden. The summit intends to galvanize new actions to address the continued challenges of the COVID pandemic and build a stronger global health security architecture. A correspondent reports that Secret Secretary General of the United Nations, Director General of World Health Organization and other dignitaries will also participate in the summit. India is playing a key role in the ongoing global efforts to combat the pandemic by supplying safe and affordable vaccines, medicine, development of low-cost indigenous technologies and capacity building for healthcare workers. It is also proactively engaged in multilateral fora with the objective of strengthening and reforming the global health security architecture with World Health Organization at its center. Prime Minister Modi will deliver his address in the opening session of the summit on the theme Preventing Pandemic Fatigue and Prioritizing Preparedness. Mr Modi had also participated in the first global covid virtual summit hosted by President Biden in September last year. Dipendra Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. The Supreme Court has ordered that the 152-year-old sedition law under Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code should be effectively kept in abeyance till the Union government reconsiders the provision. In an interim order, the court urged the center and the state governments to refrain from registering any FIRs under the said provision while it was under reconsideration. A bench comprising Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramanna, 
Justice Surya Kant and Justice Hima Kohli held that all pending cases, appeals and proceedings with respect to charges framed under Section 124A be kept in abeyance. Law Minister Kiran Rijiju said that the government respects the court and its independence. Replying to our media query in New Delhi over the Supreme Court's stay on the sedition law, Mr. Rijiju said the centre has made its position very clear on it and also informed the court. We have made our position very clear and we also informed the Honourable Court about the intention of the Honourable Prime Minister. Beyond that, if anything else has happened, I don't know. But one thing I must say is that we respect the independence of the court, but there are things which is called Lakshman Rekha. All the organs of the state must respect each other and also to practice our respect in letter and spirit. Whatever we say, whatever we do, we have to ensure that we respect the provisions of the Constitution of India as well as all the existing laws. Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju also criticized Congress leader Rahul Gandhi over his comment on sedition laws. In a series of tweets, Mr. Rijiju said, if there is one party that is the antithesis of freedom, democracy and respect for institutions, it is the Indian National Congress. He said, the party has always stood with forces that try to break the country and left no opportunity to divide India. Mr. Rijiju said it was the Indira Gandhi government which made Section 124A a cognizable offence for the first time in India's history. The law minister pointed out that it was none other than Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru who brought in the First Amendment and it was Shama Prasad Mukherjee and the Janasangh which opposed the measure aimed at curtailing freedom of expression. The Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI, has arrested 14 accused persons, including six public servants, on corruption charges for getting backdoor Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, FCRA, registration to NGOs illegally. The CBI conducted searches yesterday at the premises of the accused at around 40 locations, including Delhi, Haryana, Rajasthan, Jharkhand, Himachal Pradesh, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Assam and Manipur. During the searches, more than 3 crore rupees in cash, several incriminating documents and mobile phones were recovered. The agency said a case was registered in this regard against 36 persons, including 7 public servants of FCRA Division of Home Ministry and National Informatics Center and middlemen, along with representatives of various NGOs. Union Minister for Science and Technology Dr. Jitendra Singh has said, the future belongs to technology-driven economy and called for building innovation ecosystem in the country. Speaking at the National Technology Day 2022 event in New Delhi yesterday, Dr. Singh said, science, technology and innovation are going to be the key determinants of the roadmap for the next 25 years when the country celebrates 100 years of independence. He said there is an urgent need to build an innovation ecosystem for the startups as there is no dearth of talent and resources in the country. For this, the minister emphasized to adopt integration approach rather than acting in silos. We will be heading into an era where one of the scientists would be getting an award for economics. The future, to a large extent, belongs to technology-driven economy. On the occasion, Dr. Singh also gave away awards to seven most successful startups for their pioneering work in areas like quantum data security, COVID testing kits, AI powered robot for electronic assembly, cryogenic technologies, and cybersecurity systems. Ministry of Railways has said that the coal loading for powerhouses is constantly being ramped up by the Indian Railways as per the demand. It said Indian Railways is fully committed to lift all the domestic coal that is brought to sidings and goods sheds by the coal companies and imported coal brought to the port by the power generating companies. The ministry in a statement said that during this month, the availability of rakes for power sector had an upsurge with an average of 472 rakes per day. It said both coal companies and railways have envisaged to jointly ensure per day coal loading of 415 rakes of domestic coal and 30 rakes of imported coal to power sector. In the current month, loading of domestic coal for powerhouse has been average of 409 rakes per day. 
Power Ministry has directed Power Finance Corporation and Rural in- Electrification Corporation to take necessary action to arrange short-term loans for a period of six months for imported coal waste plants which are under stress. The ministry said these plants need working capital to buy coal and start generating power in order to restart their operations. In view of the increased demand and unprecedented pressure on domestic coal supplies, the ministry had issued directions to all imported coal-based plants to operate and generate power to their full capacity. The National Health Authority, under its flagship scheme, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, has announced successful integration of additional 13 digital health solutions in the mission in the last three months. With this, so far, 40 digital health service applications have been successfully integrated with Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission since the national launch was announced in September last year. Union Health Ministry, in a statement, said the ABDM Partners ecosystem now consists of 16 government applications and 24 private sector applications. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Utkarsh Samaro in Baruch, Gujarat this morning at 10.30 a.m. It marks celebration of 100% saturation of four key schemes of state government in the district. Prime Minister to also take part in the second global COVID virtual summit this evening at the invitation of U.S. President Joe Biden. Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju criticizes Congress leader Rahul Gandhi over his comment on sedition laws. Union Minister for Science and Technology Dr. Jitender Singh says future belongs to technology-driven economy and calls for building innovation ecosystem in the country. Central Bureau of Investigation arrests 14 persons, including six public servants, on corruption charges regarding illegal registration of NGOs under Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksha promises to appoint new Prime Minister within this week. Sri Lankan Central Bank Governor threatens to resign if elected representatives did not bring in political stability to the country. In Cyprus International Athletics Meeting 2022, India's Jyoti Yairaji smashes national record to clinch gold medal in the women's 100m hurdles in Limassol yesterday. In boxing, Nikhat Zareen, Parveen and Manisha pull off powerful performances at the 12th edition of the IBA Women's World Boxing Championships at Istanbul. And in IPL cricket, Delhi Capitals beat Rajasthan Royals by 8 wickets in Navi Mumbai last night. Chennai Super Kings to take on Mumbai Indians in Mumbai this evening. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Competition ke agar aap kar rahe hai tayari, to unke liye All India Radio par hum naay hai abhyas. Ek aisa karakram jis mein aap puchhenge sawal WhatsApp number 9289094044 par ya phir ईमेल करेंगे abhyas.airnews@gmail.com पर और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksha in his address to the nation last night said he would appoint a new Prime Minister and Cabinet soon. A person who commanded the confidence of the majority of parliamentarians as well as the people would be appointed Prime Minister, he said. He added that the new Prime Minister and the Cabinet could present a plan to bring about stability. President Rajapaksha also said that he will make room for the abolition of the executive presidency after discussing with all stakeholders. He said that action would be taken against those who carried out violence that left nine dead and 300 injured. 
In a related development, Sri Lankan Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Veera Singhe told media in Colombo yesterday that the Executive President and the MPs must work together to form a stable government that would pave the way for restoring law and order and peace in the country so that the Central Bank can properly carry out the economic activities. Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal yesterday held a bilateral meeting and co-chaired the 10th India-Oman Joint Commission meeting with his counterpart Khais bin Mohammed Al Yusuf. In a tweet, Mr. Goyal said, discussions were held on strengthening economic ties in multiple sectors as India seeks greater trade cooperation with the Gulf Cooperation Council following India-UAE Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. The cyclonic storm Asani weakened into a deep depression and crossed the Andhra Pradesh coast between Machili Patnam and Narsapuram last night. According to the latest bulletin by the India Met Department, the system crossed the coast between 5.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. after weakening into a deep depression with a wind speed of 55 to 65 kilometers per hour. And later, the deep depression lay centered over the coast and adjoining west central Bay of Bengal, about 30 kilometers from Machili Patnam and 40 kilometers from Narsapuram. According to the Andhra Pradesh State Development Planning Society reports, Ojili Mandal in Nalur district has received a cumulative of 136.6 mm rainfall in the past 24 hours. Nellore, Vishakhapatnam, Prakasam, Kadappa, Guntur and Vijayanagaram recorded over 50 mm of rainfall each in the last 24 hours. Talking to AIR News, DG IMD Mahapatra said that sea conditions are very rough in the Bay of Bengal and eastern Andhra Pradesh. The remnant of the cyclone storm Asani is now lying as a depression over coastal Andhra Pradesh, which is centered close to west of Muslim Partnam. The associated wind speed is about 45 to 55 km per hour, coasting to 65 km per hour around the system center and adjoining west central Bay of Bengal. Therefore, sea condition is rough, very rough over west central Bay of Bengal, along and off coastal Andhra Pradesh. So fishermen are advised not to venture into sea for the next 24 hours. Rajasthan continues to sizzle for the past week. Excessive heat has thrown normal life out of gear. Yesterday, Jalur recorded highest 47 degrees Celsius, Barmer 46 degrees, Churu 5, Kota and Bundi 46 degrees Celsius, Falodi, Pilani and Bikaner 46 degrees Celsius. Falodi, Barmer, Jaipur, Jodhpur, Jalur and Sirohi recorded night temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius. According to the Meteorological Department, there will be further increase of 1 or 2 degrees Celsius in the temperature for the next two days. Ministry of Education today issued guidelines regarding precautions to be observed by schools to combat the ill effects of the heat wave. In the guidelines, the ministry said, school hours may start early and get over before noon. It said timing may be from 7 a.m. onwards and number of school hours per day may be reduced. The ministry said sports or other outdoor activities which expose students directly to the sunlight may be appropriately adjusted in the early morning. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. In today's episode, we remember the revolutionary freedom fighter, Bal Krishna Hari Sapekar, who was martyred on the 12th of May, 1899. Bal Krishna, along with his brothers Damodar Hari Sapekar and Vasudeo Hari Sapekar, popularly known as the Sapekar brothers and accomplices Mahadev Ranade and Sathe, assassinated British official W.C. Rand and his military escort on the 22nd of June, 1897. <laughs> Balakrishna was born in Pune, Maharashtra in 1873. The passionate speeches of Bal Gangadhar Tilak 
stirred up a strong feeling of nationalism in him. When the bubonic plague hit India in 1896-97, the government set up a special plague committee for managing the pandemic. The British Plague Commissioner, W.C. Rand, unleashed a reign of terror in the name of fighting the epidemic through atrocities over quarantines, segregation camps and plague hospitals. He ordered indiscriminate burning of properties, violated private domains and committed outrages on women. <laughs> सरकार ने त्यांच्या पोलिसांच्या मनात दहशत बसवली पाहिजे The Tapikar brothers decided to kill Rand to free Pune from his terror. On the 22nd of June 1897, the Diamond Jubilee of the coronation of Queen Victoria was celebrated in Pune. As planned, Damodar Hari waited at the gate of the government house and as Rand's carriage emerged, he ran 10 to 15 paces behind it. As the carriage reached the yellow bungalow, Damodar made up the distance and called out, Gondia Ala Re, a predetermined signal for Balakrishna to take action. Damodar Hari undid the flap of the carriage, raised it and fired at Rand, who succumbed to his injuries on the 3rd of July, 1897. Balakrishna shot Rand's military escort, Lieutenant Ayerst, who died on the spot. The Tsaphikar brothers, Mahadev Ranade and Sathe, were caught. Damodar Tsaphikar was martyred on the 18th of April, 1898. Vasudev Hari on the 8th of May, 1899. Mahadev Vinayak Ranade on the 10th of May, 1899. And Balakrishna Hari on the 12th of May, 1899. Sathe, the Ujjuvanai, was sentenced to to 10 years rigorous imprisonment we salute the great freedom fighter to remember freedom fighter rozamma punnus who was born on the 12th of May 1913 at Kanjirapalli Kerala younger sister of the famous freedom fighter Akkamacharyan popularly known as the Jhansi Rani of Travancore Rozamma was active in the freedom movement and was jailed for about 3 years After independence, Rozamma joined politics and became the first person to be sworn in as a member of the Kerala Legislative Assembly. Punnus was also the first pro tem speaker of the Kerala Legislative Assembly. She had also served as the president of the Kerala Mahila Sangham and chairperson of the Plantation Corporation. In 1987, she was elected to the state legislature from Alappuzha. and till stepping down as a member of the Kerala Women's Commission in 1998 she was active in the political and social spheres of the state Rosamma Punnus died on the 28th of December 2013 we pay tribute to the great indian <laughs> We remember freedom fighter Banamali Ghasi who died on the 12th of May 1943 a resident of Koraput Odisha Ghasi was involved in the non cooperation and civil disobedience movements he took active part in the quit india movement in odisha in response to the nationwide call of mahatma gandhi banamali ghasi with other agitators was arrested and detained in the navrangpur jail there he contracted a severe disease due to the adverse and hygienic living conditions and lack of medical care under these circumstances he and other political prisoners were shifted to koraput district jail where banamali ghasi died on the 12th of may 1943 we salute the great martyr that brings us to the end of this episode of azadi ka safar with air news see you in the next episode tomorrow
The Enforcement Directorate ED arrested Jharkhand Mines and Industries Secretary Senior IAS Officer Pooja Singhal after a two-day-long interrogation yesterday in an alleged illegal money laundering case. Singhal was presented before ED court and sent to Hothwar Jail in Ranchi late in the evening. Abhishek Jha, Singhal's second husband, has also been arrested by ED in money laundering case. Senior IAS officer Pooja Singhal, along with her husband, was being interrogated by the directorate continuously for the past two days. Well, today is International Nurses Day. This day is celebrated worldwide on May the 12th to mark the contribution made by nurses to the society in a healthcare setup and in a community. The day coincides with the birthday of Florence Nightingale, the founder of Modern Nursing. The Military Nursing Service, or MNS, of the Indian Armed Forces is celebrating the day with great zeal and excitement. In Cyprus International Athletics Meeting 2022, India's Jyoti Yaraji smashed the national record to clinch a gold medal in the women's 100 meters hurdles in Limassol yesterday. 22-year-old Jyoti clocked 13.23 seconds for the top step of the podium, shattering the 20-year-old national record held by Anuradha Biswal since 2002. With this, Jyoti also breached the Asian Games 2022 qualifying standards of 13.30 seconds. In boxing, Nikhat Zareen, Parveen and Manisha pulled off powerful performances to extend India's unbeaten run at the 12th edition of the IBA Women's World Boxing Championships with dominating victories in Istanbul. Making progress into the second round, the 2019 Asian Championships bronze medalist Nikhat outpunched Mexico's Herrera Alvarez in the 52 kg category, while Praveen also thrashed Maria Bova of Ukraine. In IPL cricket, Delhi Capitals defeated Rajasthan Royals by 8 wickets at the Dr. D.Y. Patil Sports Academy in Navi Mumbai last night. Chasing a target of 161 runs, Delhi Capitals reached 161 for 2 in 18.1 overs. Earlier, Rajasthan Royals posted 160 for 6 in the stipulated 20 overs. Today, Chennai Super Kings will take on Mumbai Indians in the Vankhede Stadium in Mumbai at 7.30 p.m. And now let's have a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi will have mainly clear sky. The temperatures will hover between 29 and 43 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards evening. Chennai and Kolkata are likely to have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Jammu and Leh will have mainly clear sky. Srinagar mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards evening. Gilgit and Muzaffarabad will have partly cloudy sky. Vishakhapatnam will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. Bengaluru will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Top Court Hits Pause Button on Colonial Era Sedition Law, headlines the Hindustan Times. Wheat Output Dips, Experts for Cap on Exports, says Tribune. This is due to the heat wave and early onset of summer. The Business Standard reports of concerns over iron fortified rice by a fact-finding team in PDS with complaints of gastritis, diarrhea. There are fears of plastic rice being mixed with normal rice. Green rules ease to lift coal output. Production can be hiked sans local consent is the Asian Age headlines. And finally, the Economic Times reports that Google has added eight Indian languages to Google Translate. Now, Sanskrit has been added too as it is the number one most requested language. Now, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Utkarsh Samaro in Bharuch, Gujarat this morning at 10.30 a.m. It marks the celebration of 100% saturation of four key schemes of the state government in the district. Prime Minister to also take part in the second global COVID virtual summit this evening at the invitation of U.S. President Joe Biden. Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju criticizes Congress leader Rahul Gandhi over his comment on sedition laws. Union Minister for Science and Technology Dr. Jitendra Singh says future belongs to technology-driven economy and calls for building innovation ecosystem in the country. Central Bureau of Investigation arrests 14 persons including six public servants on corruption charges regarding illegal registration of NGOs under the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, FCRA. 
ശ്രീലങ്കൻ പ്രസിഡന്റ് ഗോതബയ രാജപക്ഷ പ്രൊമിസസ് ടു അപ്പോയിന്റ് ന്യൂ പ്രൈം മിനിസ്റ്റർ വിദിൻ ദിസ് വീക്ക് ശ്രീലങ്കൻ സെൻട്രൽ ബാങ്ക് ഗവർണർ സ്ട്രെറ്റൻസ് ടു റിസൈൻ ഇഫ് ഇലക്ടഡ് റെപ്രസെന്റേറ്റീവ്സ് ഡിഡ് നോട്ട് ബ്രിങ് ഇൻ പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ സ്റ്റെബിലിറ്റി ടു ദ കൺട്രി ഇൻ സൈപ്രസ് ഇന്റർനാഷണൽ അത്ലറ്റിക്സ് മീറ്റിംഗ് ട്വന്റി ട്വന്റി ഇന്ത്യ ജ്യോതി യറാജി സ്മാഷസ് നാഷണൽ റെക്കോർഡ് ടു ക്ലിഞ്ച് ഗോൾഡ് മെഡൽ ഇൻ ദ വിമൻസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് മീറ്റർ ഹേർഡൽസ് ഇൻ ലിമസോൾ യെസ്റ്റർഡേ ഇൻ ബോക്സിംഗ് നിഖത് സരീൻ പ്രവീൺ ആൻഡ് മനീഷ പുൽ ഓഫ് പവർഫുൾ പെർഫോമൻസസ് അറ്റ് ദ ട്വൽത്ത് എഡിഷൻ ഓഫ് ദി ഐ ബി എ വിമൻസ് വേൾഡ് ബോക്സിംഗ് ചാമ്പ്യൻഷിപ്സ് അറ്റ് ഇസ്താൻബുൾ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ഐ പി എൽ ക്രിക്കറ്റ് ഡൽഹി ക്യാപിറ്റൽസ് ബീത് രാജസ്ഥാൻ റോയൽസ് ബൈ എയ്റ്റ് വിക്കറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ നവി മുംബൈ ലാസ്റ്റ് നൈറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദി എൻഡ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് ന്യൂസ് ബുലറ്റിൻ 